I'm a mathematician and biologist interested in the theory of evolution, and one of my favorite topics is cooperation. And here you see three examples of cooperation. Um, among cells, among bacterial cells, as it existed three billion years ago, they form filaments. Ever so often a cell dies to feed the others with nitrogen. This is a behavior that came about um, 125 million years ago. Social insects, individuals do not reproduce, but help another individual reproducing. And cooperation is a fundamental force of human behavior. An example here is the Good Samaritan in a painting of Vincent van Gogh. So cooperation is the following idea. There's an interaction between two individuals, cells or people, and there's a donor and a recipient. The donor pays a cost, the recipient has a benefit. And the question is, why should you do this? Because the other person is a competitor in the struggle of natural selection. And the answer is, you shouldn't do this because natural selection prefers defection. If we don't add anything here, natural selection will favor defectors over cooperators because they have a higher average fitness. Therefore, natural selection needs help to favor cooperators over defectors. And my work over the last 20 years was really to summarize and also to contribute that all of these mechanisms for help, all of these ideas how natural selection can favor cooperation over defection can be summarized in terms of five mechanisms. And I want to give you a flavor of what these mechanisms are. Direct reciprocity, indirect reciprocity, spatial selection, group selection, and kin selection. I will go through each of them in turn. So direct reciprocity is the simple idea I help you, you help me. We have repeated interactions and we play strategies. And in such a setting, cooperation can prevail over defection. If we use something like bit for that, generous bit for that, or wind stalus shift. In this area, you also discover the evolution of forgiveness. Natural selection prefers strategies that can forgive. Another mechanism is indirect reciprocity. I help you, somebody helps me. Indirect reciprocity is based on reputation. So a display of indirect reciprocity can be found here. Because here you see, for example, that MIT gave a lot of money and Harvard gave a little amount of money only. <laughs> this is indirect reciprocity. Uh, gossip spreads reputation. And indirect reciprocity has to do with social intelligence and human language. My friend David Haig at Harvard said, for, for direct reciprocity, you need a face. For indirect reciprocity, you need a name. Uh, spatial selection is the idea neighbors help each other. We just cluster together, and it is social networks. Cooperators can prevail over defectors. Um, this can lead to uh, funny patterns that have some mathematical interest. Um, we can also study games on graphs or social networks. So you cooperate with your friends, and, and you form like this community, and you can't really be exploited or invaded by these defectors. You can think of games on sets. You join certain clubs, or you go to certain events. And you meet cooperators there, and in this way you can establish cooperation. Um, the fourth mechanism is group selection. And here's a quote by Charles Darwin. There can be no doubt that a tribe, including many members who are always ready to give aid to each other and to sacrifice themselves for the common good, would be victorious over other tribes. And this would be natural selection. The last mechanism, kin selection, a quote from GPS Holden, I will jump into the river to save two brothers or eight cousins. He was not only a founding father of population genetics, he was also politically very active. He was a dedicated communist, here addressing a group of British workers, presumably not talking about kin selection. So this is what I'm proposing. There are three fundamental forces of evolution, not just two, as traditionally proposed. Evolution is not just mutation and selection, but there's also cooperation. And in fact, cooperation is needed for the evolution of the first cell of multicellular organisms of animal societies and of human language. Um, and therefore, I'm arguing that cooperation is the master architect of evolution. And I have time to spare because I conducted so fast, like Beethoven did, because he knew the stuff so well. Thank you very much. <laughs> I have to say, I think that is actually, in four years of doing this, a record. Uh, and what's more, when you said you were going to go through these five different forms, I thought, oh my goodness, he's never going to make it. <laughs> and then you made it with almost a minute to spare. It's incredible. So uh, I'd like to, while people catch their breath and think about this, I mean, I'm not quite sure why you want to characterize cooperation is clearly a very important thing. And clearly we see these multiple examples. Why do you want to characterize it as a third force? Isn't it just another 
mechanism by which selection leads to interesting and intriguing results down the generations. How is it a third force? Yeah, it's a good point. So I, I organize the fundamental principles of evolution hierarchically. So mutation leads to vari variation. Yes. Upon this variation, selection can act. But selection, it just gives you something like antibiotics resistance or escape from, from drug treatment. So it gives you, on a certain level of organization, advan advantages. And cooperation is really needed to go from one level of organization to a higher level of organization, from single cells to multicellular organisms, from molecules to cells, from animal societies to human societies. So it's, it's an architect. Okay, thank you. Now, over here. First, through this perspective, could we recast the golden rule um, as a scientific principle rather than a moral imperative? Yeah, um, things like um, forgiveness, uh, that becomes the property of a winning strategy. So winning strategies in repeated games have three properties, hopeful, generous, and forgiving. Hopeful in the sense that my first move, if I see a stranger, should be to cooperate, for me to be a winning strategy. Uh, generous, in any one interaction, I don't demand 51% of the share. I'm very happy often with 49%. The important thing is that many cakes get divided properly and not destroyed. And uh, forgiving, if uh, somebody defects, we have to find a way back to re-establish cooperation. Thank you. Yes, over here. Just like game theory with Nash, isn't that everything reverting back? Basically, the prisoner dilemma, every choice has a response. If they don't make the response, wouldn't that basically say everything reverts back to zero with his equilibrium constant? Um, so the prisoner's dilemma is just one of many games, and economists like to study Nash equilibrium, and Nash equilibrium is very important for us biologists, but there's one other element, that is in biology we observe there's never equilibrium. We always observe oscillations. There are always cycles of cooperation and defection, and there's never a stable equilibrium. There are always, there's always like a financial crisis, and some rebuilding, and a new crisis. And okay, thank you. Yes? Um, it's group selection specific to collections of the same species, or is it um, when several species get together? Like, for example, we're finding now that there are microbiomes of yeah, many species of bacteria and fungi in bigger hosts. So is the selection working at the group level, or uh, is selection working on the level of collections of genomes, and what implications does it have on selection at the level of individual, as we have seen it, like always in evolutionary biology? It's a brilliant question. Um, so it's certainly the case that group selection would also work if the group is consisting of different species, and I can tell you, nobody has really worked on this, and you're very much invited to work with me on it. <laughs> yeah. But th that's, a, on the face of it, surprising, because there are many examples, aren't there, of symbioses where they, it looks as if there is... Um, the mechanism of group selection hasn't been used to describe this, but that's okay. a great idea. Okay. okay. I have to do that. So there's a research project in the making between <laughs> our questioner and our speaker, which is great. Yes, please. You mentioned human language, and you didn't say much about how your story applies. Could you say something, please? Um, so, the, I worked also the evolution of human language. And for the evolution of human language, you need cooperating individuals because we want to be in a cooperative relationship that we exchange information and that we evolve a better way to exchange information. So, cooperation is kind of needed for the evolution of language. On the other hand, you need language to have indirect reciprocity because we have to be able to talk to each other about others. And therefore, there's a co-evolution between social intelligence, human language, and cooperation. Okay. You've once again beaten the clock. <laughs> I, I, I know you're not going to get away till the end. So, how new is this in evolutionary theory? People have been worrying or wondering about the evolution of cooperation you point to Darwin himself. This is as old as modern evolutionary theory. What is new here from your point of view? What is the most important development we've made? I think it's the precise mathematical understanding of the forces that lead to cooperation and of what cooperation does for construction. Okay, thank you. I'm sorry I didn't see you in time. I'm sorry. Thank you. All right. We